Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. On today's episode, we've got Vasi Capellos, a CTV reporter, absolutely ripping Champagne, which is Liberal's Minister of Innovation, Science, and Research, whatever the title is. He's speaking from the White House, just outside the White House. He's doing this big American tour. They talk a lot about Trump and all that. It's quite an uh, uneventful, boring kind of interview. But at the end, she brings up the carbon tax, and she just lays it on thick. She actually says what I'm saying on here, what all the other creators are saying on here, what we're all thinking about the carbon tax and how it doesn't actually give back more money than they say it does. So check it out. Okay, understood. I just want to move on then to a domestic issue because you have been also one of the ministerial leads when it comes to the government's agenda to address the cost of living. Uh, the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, a Liberal, Andrew Fury, is now today calling on your government to pause the increase to the carbon tax slated for April the 1st. Will you consider that? Listen, I, I, I like Premier Fury. I've known him for a long time, but I think uh, we have been very clear that a price on pollution is the right thing to do. Uh, it brings more money in the pocket of Canadians. That, that vision, uh, that approach uh, has been clear from the start. The Prime Minister has been clear. Uh, I hear his voice, but I think that, you know, we have a plan to fight climate change. Uh, we have been clear with Canadians uh, all along. And honestly, I think that uh, Canadians understand that the plan is working. It's going to bring more money in the pockets of Canadians. And we're going to continue to do that because you know what? This is an investment in, in the future. This is an investment that has allowed us also to attract investment in Canada because people see these Canadians are serious about fighting climate change. So <laughs> I, I would be uh, happy to engage with Premier Fury. I'll see him soon. Uh, but I can tell you we're going to continue to do what's right for the country, not only now, but for the future. <laughs> serious about fighting climate change seriously man you guys haven't planted a single tree you haven't had conversations with china with you know if you sat down with china and said hey what technology do you guys need to help reduce your emissions that would be an honest i would believe them like okay they're actually trying to do something about carbon levels etc affecting canada's climate levels of 1.5 percent globally means nothing it means nothing in the global scale you have to go talk to china or you have to over plant trees beyond belief that it it will take out extra carbon for to make up for china and india and, and america champagne is just a bumbling idiot as usual minister though the premier's point is that he is not uh, like you characterize many of your opponents on the carbon tax uh, against the issue of mitigating climate change, that he takes it very seriously. But at the same time, people in Newfoundland and Labrador and many of the other provinces in which this carbon tax applies are dealing with a high rate of inflation, uh, high interest rates, and he's simply asking your government to pause the increase until interest rates go down and inflation stabilizes. Why won't you at least consider that? Are you so ideologically wedded to it that you can't listen to the premiers who are saying it is adding to the burden of the cost of living for the people who live in their provinces? Listen, I understand the issue about cost of living, Vashi. I've been the one with colleagues who have been fighting all along to make sure that life is more affordable for Canadians. I took on, for example, the grocery sector and the big chains to make sure that people can afford grocery. I keep on that fight. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going to even bring that at the G7 meeting that I'm going this evening uh, to make sure that we start seeing competition issues, making sure uh, that, that life is more affordable. I get that. You know, I come from rural Canada. I this guy doesn't get anything. He makes 300K a year and he's trying to tell us he gets it. Give me a break. Know that people talk to me, but at the same time, uh, people that I meet in the street understand that we need also to be fighting climate change, that the price on pollution is the best way to be tested. Uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we, we have the, the right framework to make sure that we drive the right behavior, but at the same time that we send the, the money back in the pocket of Canadians. So uh, this is a system that it's working and, and Canadians understand that. Respectfully, Minister, do Canadians actually see that it's working? The Auditor General pointed out that your government has not attached a specific emissions reductions target to the price on carbon, that you have not produced <laughs> evidence. NDP, the NDP Premier of Manitoba said the same thing. The people associated with the provincial NDP in both Saskatchewan and Alberta have raised the same concerns. Now your Liberal colleague is also calling into a question the, exactly what you're trying to argue. Even the Parliamentary Budget Officer has said when you take into account all the indirect costs slightly more Canadians are worse off than better off because of the carbon tax. Again, 
Why are you so ideologically wedded to it that you can't just wait until inflation stabilizes and press pause for a moment? Listen, it's not about ideology. It's about the planet. Vashi, I'd say that the fact that we have a plan to fight climate change has brought billions of investment in this country. People understand, you know, we set ourselves to be the green supply choice uh, of choice to the world, whether it's green aluminum, green steel, green batteries, green semiconductor, that's... <laughs> Dude, she's not buying it, man. Look at this face. That's what we're known for. Uh, this has attracted investment and make sure that, you know, we position Canada as a leader in the world. And, and decarbonizing industries is a trend. Look in Alberta. We have Idleberg, for example. We're going to have the first green cement plant in the world. Dow Chemical decided to put their plant in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. Why? Because they want to have the greenest property land plant in the world. Thank goodness we're going to have the greenest green cement plant in, like... Dude, there's people living in tents on the street, man. Who cares about the green cement plant? You can't even take care of your own citizens. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be absolutely ashamed. You should go crawl into some cave in the middle of Mongolia and never come out again for your punishment. This is just... <laughs> Do they have caves in Mongolia? I'm assuming there's caves in Mongolia. The mountains. The mountain is part of Mongolia. We're getting off track here. <laughs> So that system is working. It's bringing money in the pockets of Canadians. And I think the vast majority of Canadians agree that we need to keep on and fighting climate change. It's the right thing to do for the planet. It's the right thing to do for our kids. And we can do it in a sensible way, making sure that we drive the right, and the right behavior that gives money back in the pockets uh, of Canadians. I respect my colleagues. You know, I talk with all the premiers in Canada, for sure. Uh, but at the same time, we need uh, to make sure that we take the right decision uh, no, for wrong. now, but also for the future. You're an idiot, nation. Champagne. Just very quickly, Minister, you're standing in Washington, D.C. Your government has hailed the climate policy of this White House administration as incredibly serious. It is also attracting the investment that you talk about, and it is doing so without a consumer carbon tax. Again, Burn. why not consider? You just got burnt, man. <laughs> she came with her notes today, man. You're <laughs> Well, I would say what has been attracting investment in Canada is the talents, the talent of our people. It's the ecosystem we have, whether it's the aerospace industry and the natural resources. And I was just in Calgary a few days ago. It's the critical minerals we have and the tax. proximity. <laughs> well, listen, I, I think that you know, I mean, there's different things. In a the sense, they see that we are serious on fighting climate change. But you were asking me broadly, how do we attract investment? Is our people, it's the fact that we have- <laughs> That singer there, she just dropped that in there. This guy doesn't know. He filled his diaper and he does not know where to go. Ecosystem, we have the critical mineral, renewable energy and access to market. And the fact that they see Canada as the- Listen, I was giving you the example of South Carolina. Imagine the cars manufacturing in South Carolina at BMW use aluminum, which is produced in Quebec, which is the greenest aluminum in the world. That's an example of why our policies and the investment we've been driven is is helping this economic security. When I said that to the governor, I must tell you, you should have seen, he even gave me his phone number. So that tells you about the relationship. When they see these things, they say, well, we are interdependent. We need to work together. We need to bring these investments together. We have a chance in a generation to attract uh, investment in North America. That's what we're doing. You've put more people on the streets. There's like, I read some number 300, 330,000 people that are homeless in Canada. Why are you not making that the number one priority, man? Yeah, we already know my thoughts on this because they want this to happen. They want Canadians to suffer. No one else would ever cause intentional suffering. If they saw they did something was hurting Canadians, they're like, oh, we better do the opposite because we messed up. These liberals are either too arrogant to admit they mess up or they're intentionally doing this out of nefarious reason. I really wonder, all these liberals are going along with this, this whole narrative. Do they all get some sort of cut of whatever's going on? Are they taking a chunk of that three billion that we sent over to Ukraine? Is that getting divvied up to all the members? Like why? <laughs> we need to have some access to all their their all the emails and stuff that's going on in there. At the very least, someone in the Conservatives and the NDP and the whatever PPC, the Green, they should all have access to all the back records to see what is going on. It doesn't make any sense because these people are not this stupid. They have so many smart people at least working around them. So even if they were a complete bumbling idiot boneheads with a very low IQ, there would be high IQ people around them telling them, hey, you shouldn't do that. So they have to be doing something nefarious. Prove me wrong, guys, because you guys, you're pushing a carbon tax that doesn't help anyone but yourselves, clearly.
Thanks for watching the end of the video here. Oh, are we being blessed by Boo? Hi, Boo. Thanks for watching the end of the video. Boo greatly appreciates it, and so do I. If you want to check out merch, I've got that down in the YouTube shelf now. I don't know. Does that show up on phones or is it just on desktop? I don't know how any of that stuff works. It's going through Spreadshop now, so it's much cheaper, lower rates and lower shipping rates. It's much better. So big thanks to all of you for watching my videos and all the channel members. I'll keep cranking out the videos, bringing up the truth. Stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.